This is a 148 scale cottage kit from Jill Castrol. It's four times smaller than 112 scale. Let's kick things off by painting the interior walls of our pieces. I'm using a one stroke painting technique where you load the brush with two different colors and you achieve your shading and highlights in the same pass. It's a really simple technique and it adds a lot of character to the walls. While the walls are drying, let's work on the floor. I'll make a video going into great detail about how to do this, but I didn't want this video to spend too much time on the construction because I made so many fun pieces of decor. I wanna focus on that. So I'll keep this explanation brief. Essentially what I did for the floors was use an X-Acto knife to make a solid piece of wood look like individual boards. I stained it with watered down paint and sealed it with Mod Podge. Now this place is really about to come together. I'm just using some wood glue and hot glue to assemble the walls of the cottage. I'm using the wood glue so it'll hold over time and the hot glue so it'll hold right away. Once I glue it down to the base, I use some clamps. The kit comes with a cast resin fireplace and that's why there's a little hole in the roof. I'm trying something new and I really love how it turned out so don't ever be afraid of just going for it. I'm using some XBS foam which is insulation foam to create a base for my dollhouse. It's at an ugly stage right now but once I painted it with some Mod Podge mixed with black paint it looked a lot better. I also painted the resin chimney. I decided the base was a bit too tall, so I cut about an inch off of it, and I think the scale is a lot better. This is a lighting kit from a company called Evan Designs. I really love this. All I did was cut some space in my foam base and tuck it in there. I also drilled a hole in the side so I can have a little wall light fixture. I'll make the light fixture later in the video, but for now I want to finish up the exterior of the cottage. I'll be covering this cottage in trees and the first step of that is adding some aluminum foil armature. There are lots of different ways you could achieve this kind of look. You could do a paper mache route with some watered down glue and paper towel or newspaper. You could also use air dry clay or paper clay. I'll be covering my trees with some air dry clay. In retrospect, I made some of my armatures a bit too thick. I didn't realize how much bulk the clay would add. To add the clay, I laid down some white glue and smushed my air dry clay into place. I used this rubber tipped tool to add bark texture and interest to the trees. It takes about a day for this to dry and it does crack as it dries, so keep that in mind. I've shingled a dollhouse once and I said I will never do it again. But this is a much faster way to do it. I'm cutting some lines into paper to give it texture and then I'm using some fine sandpaper to knock the texture down a little bit. I'm cutting quarter inch wide shingles. Then I use my X-Acto to cut the shingles at different angles and lengths. This technique gives the look of individual shingles but instead I'll be laying my shingles an entire strip at a time so it goes a lot faster. I'm using some tacky glue to attach my paper strips of shingles. I'm making sure to apply them in such a way so that the pattern staggers like you would see on a brick wall. So I don't want straight lines going down my roof. I want them to stagger like this. To finish off the top of the roof, I'm using my X-Acto knife to score two lines so I can fold this over the top part. And then I'm cutting individual shingles and I overlap these across the top of the roof. This roofing technique went really quickly for me. I think it took about 15 minutes start to finish and I think it gives the look of individual shingles quite convincingly. I'm working on getting the exterior of this house detailed and finished. So I decided to pull out my hot glue gun and add some more dimension to the trees. I used my heat gun to melt the hot glue strands and painted it with a mixture of black paint and Mod Podge. I think it was really fun putting this together but now we get to move inside. This kit comes with this fireplace and I wanted to make it look a little more rustic. Breaking the piece off definitely made it look more rustic. I just used my X-Acto knife to take away the hard edges you find on laser cut pieces and make this look more organic. I really like how I use the back of the knife to add grooves to the top of the mantle. I chose an exciting beige color for the background. This will sit behind the trees. 
I wasn't sure what color to paint the trees yet, so instead I just moved on and I started outlining where the fireplace falls on the wall and used my pencil and X-Acto knife to score some bricks into the wall. I painted it white to act as mortar and I painted little individual bricks on. This didn't take too long and I really like the look. This is a witch's cottage but it won't be staying black. I'm mixing some white glue with some spackle and I'm using this on the outside of the house to make it look like plaster. I use my brush to stipple to give it some added texture. This resin chimney is really smooth so I'm using the same mixture to add some grout between the bricks. So what I did is put a layer on and then wiped most of it off and I sprinkled the chimney and the sides with sand to add some texture. This spackle is serving triple duty. I'm using it on the foundation to make some bricks. All I did was pull my little plastic tool across and I went in multiple directions so I wouldn't have weird little ridges because I don't want someone to be able to look at it and tell how I did this technique. I finished it off with some sand and painted the exterior. I chose a light color because the roof and the trees will be darker. For the roof, I wanted to have some variation in the tiles, like maybe it's slate or something natural. So I decided to paint a bunch of different squares, various colors. This is the exterior color on the top right now. Then I added a slightly darker shade. And I kept adding colors until I ended up with this pretty interesting looking roof. But this isn't the final look because I ended up going over this with a black wash. In retrospect, I probably should have sealed it first because I ended up wiping some of my paint off and it's a bit darker than I wanted. So I went over all of it with an ivory dry brush just to lighten it up. A thinner coating of dark wash would have retained more of the contrast, but I think this looks like slate. I like it. I sealed it off with some Mod Podge. The spackle and sand on my chimney is dry, so I painted it white to act as grout and hit it with some dry brushing and a brick color. I went back and darkened some of the bricks just to give it some variation and make it look more natural. I gave my trees a base coat of brown paint and forgot to dry brush them to bring out the details. Oops. I kept the leftover pieces of foam I had from when I made the base and I used this to piece in some stairs. I used full strength spackle to fill in any large gaps. I added some texture to the stairs with my glue and spackle mixture and then I dabbed it off to reveal some cracks I cut into the foam with my X-Acto knife. I'm not sure what look I was going for, but I just added some gray tones and brown tones until I liked the color and then I finished it off with some dry brushing. If you don't own flocking, you need to run out and get some or make some because this stuff is magic. I spread some white glue on my base and just started falling more and more in love with this project with every shake of my flocking. What I'm doing looks a bit random, but I thought about it a little bit and I decided to attach my largest pieces first. And then I used this medium tone I have that's somewhat fine and finished off with my finest flocking, which is the bright green flocking. This is really starting to look like a little forest. Blocking is pretty versatile. Here I'm using it as um, a filler, so I'm just mixing it with some glue and I'm filling this little gap that's underneath my chimney and I finish it off with another sprinkle of flocking. I don't think you can ever use enough, so I decided I need a little bit of moss on my roof and I just laid down some glue and dropped some more flocking on top. To seal it all in place, I sprayed it with rubbing alcohol and dropped on some watered down glue. You can also spray on the glue, but I don't have another bottle and I just keep forgetting to buy one. I finished it off with another dusting of flocking and set that aside to dry. This house looks a little too pristine for sitting in the middle of a forest, so I used some brown chalk pastels to rub in some shadows and dirt. I want this cottage to look rustic and old because it's the home of a little witch, so I'm using that same floor technique to make my door look older and I use an exacto to take the hard edges off of the window pieces. When you're working in miniature every little detail adds so much. Here I'm just using some scrap paper to add some cross beams on my door. I cut little arrow shapes out of the scrap paper. I want these to look like cast iron hinges. 
This kit comes with little wooden shutters and I added the same paper cross beams to those and gave everything a green paint color. Dry brushing brings out texture and adds a lot of interest so I hit this with some light green and then an even lighter green. Add dry brushing to your tool bag if you don't do it. Everything looks so much better. I sealed the finished pieces with matte Mod Podge when they were all dry. Now that there's a green backdrop, my little black hinges will really stand out. I love the hinges so much that I struggled off camera and made a little door pull as well. I'm using some clay on the back of a ceramic dish to rough out the shape of a lion's head door knocker. This type of thing is so small you don't really have to add a lot of detail. I'm using caviar beads for your fingernails and adding eyes. I bent some wire as the little door knocker pull thing, you know the swingy thing on the front that makes the noise. I added that on there and gave it a bake. I gave it a base coat of black paint and then gold and glued it on the front of my door. I'm finishing off the outside of this house by making some matte board window frames. I used the interior window frames as a template. The kit includes a piece of acetate with a leaded window design on it. I decided to use some sharpies to add color to my window. I cut my windows out before the glue even dried and added my secret weapon, Dimensional Mod Podge. This makes it look like UV resin, but it doesn't get hot and it doesn't deform plastic. So now my windows look like they have glass in them. I added my windows and doors and moved inside to work on a light fixture. I need to cover up this LED light, so I made three teardrop shapes out of clay and added some ridges to them. Then I used UV resin on my metal tool to make a shade type of shape and added a couple globs on either side of it. I glued that to my wall, painted the base black and then gold, and in just a couple minutes I created this really easy wall sconce. I'm always thinking of ways to add more detail and I decided my fireplace needs a hearth. I used some scrap mat board to trace the shape of the mantle. I cut out some stones from some scrap cardstock and glued them to my hearth. Some silver and gray paint and that's done. I finally decided I was just going to keep the wood raw for my fireplace and I just used some brown chalk pastels to add some shading. I stained the mantle with a really watered down brown paint and gave it a dry brush to keep it nice and light. I used some more chalk pastels to add some shading and grime to the walls inside. My witch is hundreds of years old and cleaning spells aren't her specialty. My resident witch does love to read so I'm making her an open book using some matte board. Matte board is used to frame photos and posters and it's made from layers of paper so it's perfect for this application. I cut a small border around the book using some cardstock and colored this red. This is my book cover. The pages are too pristinely white so I'm just using some brown chalk pastels to add age and a fine marker to fake some words inside. I just finished it off with a piece of red thread and it's done. On to my first piece of furniture. I bought this for $3 from Jill Castrol. It's a cast resin chair. I'm painting mine a gold color and then dry brushing it with ivory to really make the details pop and make it look worn and old. This is a great place for this open book to rest, but I think it needs a little more accessorizing. I'm using some paint to dull down this really vibrant fabric and I cut a small rectangle and frayed the edges. I used my hot glue to make a fold and I attached it to the chair. I think this makes a really cute throw blanket for cold nights. To up the charm factor even more, I used this cutout from a piece of ribbon and added a small lace blanket to the top of the chair. For my final accessory for the chair, I laid down a glob of glue on a piece of fabric I waited for it to dry somewhat and pressed another square of fabric over it and cut out the shape of a tiny throw pillow. The witch needs a fire to cozy up beside so I'm adding some soot to the fireplace with some chalk pastels. I cut a small piece of paper and glued little pieces of stick to it 
to act as the base of my fire. Off camera, I used my hot glue gun to make some shapes of flames and I painted these yellow and red. To add some soot underneath my fireplace, I glued in some chalk pastels. What's a witch without a cauldron? So I decided to rest a cauldron made from a plastic bead on top of my fire. I used a file to make the hole bigger and then I glued a brass jump ring to the top. Some twisted wire forms the handle. I glued that on with super glue and painted the whole thing black. To simulate a bubbling potion, I used some more caviar beads and glued them inside of the cauldron. I created some flames going up the side of the cauldron using my hot glue gun and I painted these the same way I painted the fire base. I want this to look like it's sitting in the flames. Heading outside, I decided to build a potter's bench for this area. I used some paper to roughly sketch out the size and shape of my potter's bench. I don't know if you've ever spent time making a miniature that's out of scale, so I like to draw things first now and cut out the shape to make sure it actually fits in the space. I'm using coffee stir sticks to make my bench. I made one of the back pieces a little longer because the ground is uneven. My bench will have a top shelf and then a table top. I used a marker to color my sticks and then I dry brushed them. I cut the piece for the top shelf at the same width as the tabletop pieces. I used my pencil to draw where the back braces are so I could notch it out and have this fit flush to the wall. I added two thin boards and secured it on the bottom with some cross braces and that makes up my tabletop. I measured my front legs in place since they're irregular because of the uneven surface and glued those in. I'm happy to have found a use for this 148 scale bucket and tools. I'll use a product I got from Green Stuff World to add a rust effect. I didn't like the look on the smooth surface so I added some super glue and baking soda to add texture. And then I put the rust over that and I think it looks a lot more convincing. I need some terracotta pots for my potter's bench, so I rolled a teardrop shape in some clay and put it on the end of my ball stylus. I got this at the Dollar Tree for $1 and I use it all the time. I rolled a thin snake of clay and flattened it and I wrapped it around the top of my pot to make a rim. I made a few more pots in various sizes, baked them at 275 for 15 minutes and painted them terracotta. Like I do with most projects, I was making this up as I went along and I got an idea of what to put on my potting bench. I rolled a ball of clay and cut it in half and this will make up two tiny mushroom stems. Took a small ball of clay and put it on the tip of my Dollar Tree tool and created the top of the mushroom, the mushroom cap. I baked these at the same time in folded aluminum foil when I baked my pots. And now it's time to start dressing up the top of this table. I glued down the cap and then chose to glue in the stem rather than trying to assemble them beforehand. And they look so cute on my table. A tiny brush and some brown paint adds a lot of dimension. I added a fallen mushroom in the grass. While I had mushrooms on my mind, I made some really simple tree mushrooms by flattening a disc of clay. I glued these on with white glue and I'm surprised at how strong they are. I love all the lightness it adds to the trees that I forgot to dry brush. And it adds a lot to my potter's bench too. I added some stacks of terracotta pots and covered some with moss. Some of them I added little bits of greenery to, like potted plants. I also used some chalk pastels to simulate some dirt coming out of this fallen pot that's on its side. I'll finish the outside later, but for now I want to deal with these empty walls. I'm back at it making books out of matte board. These will be closed books. I used my Sharpie to cover three sides of the matte board. I left the edges white at the top and bottom to look like pages. I used my X-Acto knife to cut my colored strips into different size books. I wanted varying sizes so I could turn these into book stacks. For some of the books, I cut a strip off the front so they would be shallower, so they're not all the same depth. 
To make my stacks, I took some glue and just glued them on top of each other in tapers. Some of them I glued side by side so they could sit on a bookshelf. These books look a little too pristine, so I hit them with some ivory dry brushing to make them look weathered and dusty. So far, Our Little Witch is an adorable bookworm, but she has a darker side. I have these Citadel skulls. People use these in 28 millimeter games. I used regular acrylic paint to paint them while they're still attached to their sprue. This skull in particular I had in mind to make a candle holder, so I painted two of them. I don't know where the witch got these, but I'm not going to ask. In order to turn some of my skulls into candle holders, I'm shaving down this toothpick. I added some white acrylic paint and it's starting to look like a candle, but every candle needs a flame. I used some hot glue on the tip of a pin to make my flame. And then I lost my first candle. Shoot. Once I safely cut out my other candle, I covered it in hot glue to look like flames and dripping wax and painted it yellow and red. I made a pair for the mantle. For outside, I think this raven skull is a really cheerful entrance for this home. Now about those books, I want to make some wall shelves. I just cut some pieces of popsicle stick, and painted them brown and dry brushed them. I wanted some of my shelves to have corbels. So I cut a square of popsicle stick into two triangles and glued it to the bottom. I made seven of these shelves, three with corbels and four without. Now it's just a simple matter of decorating these shelves with books and skulls. This is my first time working in 148 scale and I really love how these little mat board books turned out. So I need more wall stuff so I'm gluing this jump rings to some aluminum tape as a mirror. Over here I glued some jump rings to a piece of paper and I'll be using these to make framed art. I used some chalk pastels to age the crisp sharp white background so these will fit into my cottage a bit better. Then I finally get some use out of a giant stash of colored pencils I have and drew in a crude botanical type design. It really comes together when you add the black ink. This is the dimensional magic I used on the stained glass window. I'm using it here to simulate some glass inside of the frames. I added the dimensional Mod Podge while the tacky glue was still drying. This is what they look like wet. Once the Mod Podge dried, I used a black Sharpie to cover the white paper edge. I need some more furniture. These are 148 scale mass produced plastic pieces of furniture and I'm going to customize these to fit my little space. This table is too big so I used a couple tools to trim the tabletop down and it was really easy. I quickly sanded my table and chairs so some paint can stick. I like the idea of making this witch's cottage kind of cheerful and whimsical so I chose a pretty wild fabric to use as a tablecloth. When I started making this witch's cottage I had all of the stereotypical witch color palette ideas in mind like purple and black but I'm glad I deviated. After I put a coat of acrylic paint on the chairs I decided I want them to be upholstered so I put on a glob of glue and stuck a little square fabric on similar to the way I made my throw pillow and I just trimmed off the excess. I aged the fabric on my seats with some chalk pastels and added a second tablecloth to my table. I have these end papers and I guess they're for your hair. I don't know where they came from but they're quite old. What I did was cut a little strip and painted a very thin stick gold and I'm making a tiny scroll to adorn my table. I want to fill this tabletop with some witchy decor and I found a glob of hot glue that was perfectly round so I added it to a jump ring and now I have a crystal ball and a scroll on my table. This little oil lamp came in the furniture kit I showed you so I aged it with some brown paint and added it along with a stack of books to my table. I wasn't sure what to do with the tiny jawbone when I painted it but I really like it sitting on top of the books. All witches need some herbs for potions, 
So I glued a couple sprigs of greenery to a thin stick to make a drying rack. Here's an unorthodox side table for you. I took one of these little slices of polymer clay fruit cane and added some thin sticks for legs. While I was working inside, I was thinking about how empty the front yard looks and I came up with an idea. I quickly painted some more coffee stir sticks, used a marker to add a little bit of color, and then hit it with some dry brushing. I'm gonna be using these to make a little picket fence. They're too big in this scale, so I cut them in half. Then I cut small lengths and cut a little pointed shape at the top to make the little boards for my fence. It was easy to poke these into the foam with some glue. I love how this is looking, but it's not done yet. I cut a really thin piece to use as the horizontal pieces that go behind the picket boards. This extra detail really sells it as a picket fence. I'll show you how I made this tiny bird's nest filled with little teeny eggs and tucked it behind the shutter. If you saw my video for making a 144 scale broom, you're familiar with this roof thatching material. All I did to make the bird's nest was tie it into a very loose knot. Then I cut the stray strands with my scissors. Then I gently brushed on a bit of brown acrylic paint to mute the yellow. I glued my bird's nest behind my shutter and then glued in three small blue caviar beads. I like to hide little things like this in my miniatures so you keep discovering new things the longer you look. Every witch needs a broom, so I used the same type of technique I used when I made my 144 scale broom and made her a little pointed witch's broom for inside. I put this beside her front door. To make a vase, I just glued a bit of moss into a glass bead and I want to add some flowers to it. So I'm cutting up these little tiny pink flowers and adding them to the top with some glue. To make a robe, I considered cutting up a scrunchie, but realized the fabric is too thick for the scale. So instead, I used my hot glue gun and a napkin to make a robe out of paper. I started by folding over a piece to use as the hood. I glued the hood to a folded up piece of napkin and started making a sleeve. I'll be hanging this near the front door and you'll only see one side of it, so I only end up making one sleeve. I painted it a dark purple and then dry brushed it with a lighter color to make it look like velvet. And that's my robe done. I don't want to neglect the floor in this cottage, so I'm making an animal hide rug. A friend of mine makes knives and gave me some scrap leather. I googled what an animal hide rug looks like and traced what I saw onto a piece of end paper and glued it on the underside of the leather. That wet glue glob does end up drying clear. Then I just aged it with some chalk pastels. I'm finishing off this exterior wall for our last project before the big reveal. I got this greenery at my favorite dollhouse store for $1. They're little clumps of vine-like flowers. I thought they were a bit too vibrant, so I used some watered-down paint and muted them a bit. Then I laid down some tacky glue and started pressing them into place. You can see my pink fingers because I actually did this while they were still wet. I am pretty impatient. I glued some flocking to mimic leaves and dyed some loose petals to sprinkle on the ground. I hope you love the finished product. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate every comment, like, and subscribe. I would love to interact with you guys more, so please leave some comments down below. I created this channel to provide a place where people could come and relax and maybe even learn something and get inspired. So I'd love for all of us to interact a bit more and be part of this miniature community. Let me know what your favorite part of this project is. Oh, and I did go back and dry brush the trees after the fact. It was a little tricky dry brushing around all the moss, but it looks good in the end. I couldn't leave them dark like that. Well, anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.